Let's continue our study of uh, the uh, time complexity of recursive algorithms using recurrences. And uh, let's move on to the Towers of Hanoi. So this is a problem which involves a recursive algorithm. And uh, let's look at one simple case of it to remind ourselves of what the algorithm involved. So suppose we had these three disks and we wanted to move them to the second pillar right here. So what the, the number of steps involved are, are the following. First we have to take all the disks except the last one and move it to the other pillar. And then the second step would be to take the largest disk that is left to move it to the final pillar. And finally the last step would be to take whatever disk we had moved to the other pillar right here and move them to the final pillar. So we have three steps, two of which are actually recursive calls. To move these two disks, or however many disks we're going to have on top of the last one, um, that would involve calling back the same algorithm on, on these number of disks, on, on the reduced set of disks. So this is a recursive call, and this is also a recursive call. This one is a constant step. It's just taking one large disk and putting it into a, a, an empty pillar. So this recurrence relationship is basically expressing the time complexity of this algorithm. It's saying that there's a constant step, which is moving that big disk, and then there is two recursive calls. So two times that same recurrence, that same recurrence relationship, but this time using a reduced number of disks by one. So this clearly expresses our problem right here, the, the number of steps involved in the problem. And as we said earlier, the, uh, the, the, the constant step could be replaced by a one, because it's a, an unknown constant step and it, it doesn't really have uh, dimensions, it doesn't have units, so we could just replace it by a, a one. Uh, and we could say that this is a unit number of steps, unit number of instructions, however many instructions are there. But it's independent of the number n. So we can take this recurrence relationship and, and uh, use backwards uh, substitution to expand it, and we end up with something like this and if you look at it closely you would notice that this is a geometric series which could be expanded to this and um, this would be our, our base case two to the n times t of zero and t of zero in this case means that we are applying the recursive algorithm on zero disks and so how many number of steps are involved? There are no steps involved, so it's just a zero. Uh, so this cancels out. We are not actually using it. So we end up with this. So the recurrence relationship actually uh, goes, goes down and boils down to this relationship. And looking at it closely, we realize that it's a, a, a two event. It grows with two, uh, two to the n. So our Towers of Hanoi algorithm is a big O of two to the n. Um, let's look at another one here. This one doesn't have a specific interpretation, um, but it could, for example, be uh, a sorting algorithm where you, you first look for the minimum number, so it involves n steps, and then you're basically uh, removing that number and then calling back that same algorithm uh, on the remaining numbers that are, that, that are in the set, so n minus 1. So you've basically reduced your set by 1 and then you're calling back the same thing, sorting algorithm or whatever algorithm it is that you're doing on the same set. So we said that the first involves n steps to find the minimum number and then to call back that same algorithm on the remaining numbers. Um, and we're going to assume that t of 1, the base case, is just 1. It's a constant step. So if you're actually taking this recurrence relationship and expanding it, you end up with something like this, and, and uh, all of these numbers can be added up to this expression. And uh, to see how this works is basically just just divide the the entire all the terms uh, in, in, into uh, two sequences. So you'd have n and take the last one here. So we're trying to add n and one, and take n minus one and add it to two and keep on doing this, so you've divided your list into two lists and um, n plus 1 is basically just n plus 1, n minus 1 plus 2 is also n plus 1 and you're going to notice that they're all n plus 1's and how many n plus 1's do we have? We have the list has been divided in two, so we have n over 2 times n plus 1, this is exactly what we're having here and this is of course, it's going to give us, if you expand it, we're going to have one term with n squared, and this is going to be our largest term so it is uh, the recurrence relationship is 